situated in Tong Village near Bradford, Parkwood Outdoor Centre plays host for round two of the ACU British Extreme Enduro Championship. Paul Edmondson's Extreme Series has now received European Extreme Enduro Cup status and has set the benchmark as the UK official Extreme Enduro Series. David Knight has been a dominant figure over the past few years at this venue, taking first spot on the podium year after year. Although 2013 saw Johnny Walker pushing David close to the wire, making him have to regain the lead on two occasions. We catch up with Mikey, inspecting the course. So yeah, it was that time on the calendar again, round two of the British Extreme Enduro Championship, Fast Eddie's round two um, from Tong in Bradford. It's a pretty cool venue. You can take your kids, your wife, your grandma, your granddad. Everyone can kind of get around the forest, get to the good vantage spots where you really do see some hard enduro carnage. It's it's good. I'm, it? I'm, old, I'm old, but I'm not I'm not that old. <laughs> hey, there's no harm in looking, is there? That's all I can do is look. We couldn't do hotels. <laughs> It's about, about 14 years since I had a jump. I think he were a right mischief when he were younger. Was he? Yeah, yeah. From what I can tell, some of the stories he's got to tell. I think he's dabbled with a few dirty ladies. Isn't yeah, it? probably. <laughs> I think the, uh, the last time I was there was in 2012 when David Knight was riding the 250F um, Honda. No one could touch him there. He really dominated in the forest, uh, up the rock sections. He was amazing. The riverbed gap jump, jumped it time after time. The crowd were all sort of stood there with their, their mobile phones and their cameras sort of taking pictures. It was uh, it was pretty cool atmosphere, to be honest, and uh, I was hoping for something similar this time. I've been pretty busy with Lyndon Poskett's races to places, so I hadn't had as much time to do uh, the preparation that I like to do, which normally revolves around something pretty silly or <laughs> something stupid, but. It's the way I like to, to roll, and uh, I think it gives gives the shows a bit of uh, a bit of an edge, really. So yeah, last time I was there, 2012, I think I was dancing with um, with a nice dog called Millie, uh, <laughs> cocker spaniel dog, in the snow. We were dancing away. Uh, I think I had my shirt off at one point in the forest. Uh, had the binoculars out. It was uh, it was pretty cool. Yeah, really enjoyed it. Let the bike see the bog. <laughs> And I was hoping, you know, to go there this time. You know, my main aim is normally find a rider, someone involved in the sport that I can walk the course with, get a little bit of info on the track. You know, what's going to change because of the rain, the conditions, what tyres they're going to run, what bike they're on. Any any little bit for me, it all goes to making a better show. So, the first person I came across was the dirt dog with these fancy shades on. He was prowling around in the pit area, and he said he'd he'd, he'd have a bit of a chat, tell us what he thought about the course. So that was pretty cool. He was fairly obsessed about Neil Creighton's uh, Zipu wagon, which was parked uh, near near the entry to the forest. It's um, it's a good story. Basically, me, the dirt dog, and a few other guys went to Erzberg the year that Graham won. Uh, after all the controversy, uh, we rode with Neil Creighton, who I think he's a legend. He's a confident man. He'll always get the whole shot. You know, he's, he's the man in the Masters. He'll all, uh, sorry, the veteran category. He'll always get that whole shot. So I like Neil a lot. Funny guy. But um, yeah, I think the, the trip with Neil uh, put John off traveling for, for a while. And I guess it's just easy to let John, John explain what went on. <laughs> well, for those that don't know, we turned up at Erzberg on the Monday and the toilets that were supposed to be in use weren't in use. So Mr. Creston and his infinite wisdom invited everybody to use the fucking toilet in the camper. It became that full that when Mr. Creston turned his last giant <laughs> out and he was producing up to three a day, <laughs> it stuck right out of the toilet. Cop State went in to do one and he was horrified when he saw this monster poking out. So he demanded Neil go in, went in with the bacon scissors and cut it in half and poked it down with a stick. So yeah, after after a good bit of banter with Crayston and the dirt dog, we uh, we made our way into the forest to check out the lines that, that the dirt dog was gonna ride on race day. Um, it was pretty cool to actually to walk, to walk the course with the dirt dog because he said, you know, he's taking the more safer approach. He's not going to be risking any of the pro lines. He wanted to get around in one piece without any injuries. So it was good to see his angle on it, but then look at the pro lines and think, are they any faster, you know, or is it too risky? And I think if you know what you're doing, you're on the right bike, your tyre choice is right. I think, you know, taking the pro lines is obviously going to be faster. And people like, you know, Ben Hemingway and them top boys tell me it's a walk in the park, but. I wouldn't want to be riding up them, <laughs> pretty brutal if, uh, if I'm honest. Can you 
tell us a little bit about the course, what you think of it? Yeah, it's looking good. It's going to be a lot of carnage out there in that first race tomorrow. So uh, I think there's about 115 riders set off. So <laughs> we're sure to have some incidents. So coming here, are you impressed with what Paul's laid out? Yeah, he's put a hell of a lot of effort in. Uh, every bit of the, uh, the course is taped. So you know, it's uh, a, good, a good event to come to. What bike are you riding tomorrow? Uh, KTM 200. Okay, can you tell us a bit about why that bike's good here? Uh, well, it's good for me because it's light, and I don't have to. I don't want a big thing to wrestle around, so it's got enough power for me. So it's good, nice little small bike. We've One two five on steroids. Yeah. So yeah, we, we carried on looking around the track, different sections through all the gullies, had a look at the waterfall section. Um, and then midway round the course walk, the dirt dog decided he was going to head off and check out a few lines. And uh, I kept sort of looking at where I was, spotted a face walking up towards me, which I thought, I know that guy, pretty familiar. Turns out it was Nigel Page, who uh, was a top downhill mountain bike racer, now runs the Mountain Bike World Cup team. A uh, pretty cool character. When I was uh, younger and I was growing up, I used to do a little bit of mountain biking, and Page, was, uh, he was a cool guy. He used to look up to the way road and... Yeah, a bit of a legend really in the mountain bike world. So that brought me on to, I asked him, what are you doing here? And he said, it's the first ever hard enduro I've ridden. I'm going to have a crack at it. So I, I, th I sort of thought, this is a brilliant angle. Can we put the helmet cam on you? Will you give us a roundup afterwards? Yeah, normally I ride mountain bikes or, you know, at least I used to. I used to race professional downhill and then uh, for the past eight years I've been running a pro downhill team. So still ride downhill and mountain biking, but um, this last couple of years, I've, I've just been doing a bit of uh, enduro, I guess, on my motorbike, and um, loving it, absolutely loving it, but this is the first proper event I've, I've entered, so uh, it's, <laughs> it's probably gonna be pretty tough for me, but uh, looking forward to it. It's like a little new challenge in my 40s, so I'm um, gonna give it a go and see, see, how we, see how it turns out tomorrow. You said you were on the phone earlier to uh, Rob Warner, who's a, a pretty good trials rider in you know, mountain bike commentator. Has he given you any tips today? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Rob's real good at this. I think he's done quite a lot of this stuff over the years, you know, and, and at quite a high level. So he, he was laughing that I've entered this one, but he said I should be all right. So uh, yeah, he's just giving me a bit of, bit of crack and uh, telling me just to get in, get stuck in, and if I don't come top five, he's going to rip the piss out of me. Well, that's normal Warner stuff. <laughs> So yeah, like Nigel says, if he doesn't get a top five result, Warner's going to give him a hard time. I think Nigel Page and Rob Warner were involved in some of the best commentary in any sport of all time. Uh, the 2011 Downhill Mountain Bike World Championships, when Danny Hart took the win, I mean, it was just absolutely out of control. I love following the mountain bikes, and that, for me, just lit my fire. It was unreal. He's smashing your bike, Danny! He is gonna smash it! He loves his jabs! He's even gonna fly! Oh my god! Oh he is an absolute legend! He's gonna smash that ton! Set by Smack! From 2012, the main iconic points were still in the waterfall section big gap jump over the riverbed, the big rock slab climb, all of you know, all the bits that really test the riders, they were still in there. Just a different way around the forest. Uh, Fast Eddie had laid out a different route through the forest, different start area. And I think it was gonna make for a great day's racing, so couldn't wait. Are you enjoying it, Paul? I'm loving it, mate. Yeah, yeah. this is the life. Is it? Yeah. Living the dream. You know, you know, you know you've made it when you've got this life. <laughs> Plodding around in mud all day. Mm. Yep. You got yep. some uh, some vodka in the water there. No, that's later, mate. <laughs> <laughs>Especially just the same as Ellie, really, just been dirty all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Are you uh, looking for any secluded spots in the forest today, Ellie? No. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Sunday morning, got myself up early, got back over to Tong and just started checking out what was happening on the day. Now, race one in the morning was the sportsman class where the dirt dog was riding, the vet class where Neil Crayston, the whole shot king, was going to be riding. And in the youth class was a guy I was looking for called Brad Williams, son of the legendary Tim Williams, a uh, bit of a wild man from Wales. Uh, sadly, I was hoping that the Dirt Dog and Crayston were gonna be in the uh, same class so we could get a bit of a, 
bit of rivalry, but they weren't, so we just had to see how it went on. So I started to have a wander down to the start line, where the riders were already lining their bikes up. Now they're trying to get the best possible start area so they can get down that start ramp into the right hand turn and over the rock gardens. Because if you're not in the first few of your class into that rock garden, you're just going to get caught up in a mound of traffic and it's going to be a nightmare. You sometimes at the others get a big start where you know the riders can really wind it up and then into the first corner, whether it's a right or a left. But I like the way that it is at Tong because if you're not out in front, you're just going to struggle really. Yeah, I was asking Craystar there if he'd get the uh, the actual scissors out that we could actually... Uh, what, a reenactment? Yeah, reenactment, yeah. I was asking if they had the exact staining still on from Erzberg. What, what are your thoughts when you see it now, John, in front of you? Well, what can I say? The dirt dog was prowling around again and uh, he was talking a bit of fuel in for us, you know, explaining that he was hoping to do the whole day on one tank, just kind of taking it steady and, uh, and making it last. Well, I'm expecting to go the whole two hours. Uh, mm -hmm. I just think here that you can run the bike with a full tank, put it onto the normal position. If it runs out, you get you should get back to here on what's left in the reserve. That's the theory. Back up in sort of the pit area, there was a couple of guys, I think there were Scottish guys. One of them was the national cross country quad champion, I think, uh, didn't quite catch his name. But they'd actually fitted thumb throttles to their, uh, their, their solo, their enduro bikes, which was pretty interesting. I've never seen that before. But I guess if that's what you used to, then you know it's, it's worth sticking with it. Thumb throttle is, he's a quad rider, and that's what he's used to. If that's what you're used to and it works for you, you as well use it. So yeah, around about eight o'clock, uh, spotted Nige, he was just sort of getting his bike out the van. Look like you know what you're doing there, Nige? Yeah, I've just found out today that I've been putting 50 mils too much oil in my bike for the last many years. Is it smoking like an old barbecue? Yeah, I thought it was just uh, warming up, but apparently too much oil's been going in the metal, but it should last longer, shouldn't it? I think he'd already had his breakfast, but he said he was still feeling a bit hungry, so we got him up to the burger van and got some proper race fuel in him. Preston's talking confident about how he's going to get the whole shot. Yeah, I think uh, we're on for it, Mike. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're looking good. I'll get into position and get the whole shot. Yeah, the whole <laughs> shot, that's it. How are you feeling nice start line now, first enduro, hard enduro? Yeah, I'm thinking uh, what am I doing to be fair. <laughs> you think Warner's tips are gonna come in here? No, I could do with Warner on my bike. Do you think? <laughs> yeah. What's your worry here than you're getting roosted? I'm gonna get filled in and then straight into that rock garden, innit? Which is gonna be a bit tricky for me. Like trialsy stuff straight off. Bit of wood, bit of wood scrambling and then into that big rock waterfall thing, which I still don't know what way to go, so. You're just gonna go for it, though? I think I might have to. Depends how I go from here to there. <laughs> Good luck, anyway. All right, cheers, pal. <laughs> so yeah, like I said, the, uh, the onboard cam was on Nige Page. And I don't think he got the best start. He was pretty hell for leather into the first right-hand corner, into the rock garden. And I think he got himself caught up with a bit of traffic, where really, if that happens to you, you've just got to keep yourself calm, compose yourself, and just try and pick off the riders in front of you and get back up to where you want to be. <laughs> So I guess from my point of view, a filming point of view, the start's great, you get a lot of action, everyone's totally focused on that first corner. Bona da, Scott Adoui, uh, Bradoui Norfi, Ratio Baikyo, Mordio. You know, I've got to decide where, where am I going to go that's going to get the best action. So after chatting to a few people, I decided I'd get to one of the hill climbs. It sounded like the riders were, were struggling to get up and there was a few bikes flipping back down. So for me, that's prime time filming. Uh, on my way down, I saw Crayston coming round and uh, he didn't seem to be having the best run. He, he got himself stuck in a ditch and uh, was struggling to get out of it. 
So yeah, after I'd seen Creston uh, ripping and tearing through the forest on a hard charge, I was making my way down to the hill climb when I came across Bob Mullins from Enduro News. But unfortunately for him, he'd, he'd taken a tumble and uh, landed in the mud, so he was pretty, uh, pretty hacky. He's a cool dude, I think he understands my banter, he likes it, but when it goes too far, I get told to turn the camera off and uh, I guess you just gotta, you got to respect his wishes, but funny guy. Can I have my Jane Berry DVD back? Yes, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> my dough was very poor. Was it? It was very poor. Oh, right, OK. I saw you have a slip there, Bob. That was it. Did you lose traction? <laughs> Mike, please take us away. <laughs> So yeah, when I finally got to the hill climb, you know, it was, as the other spectators had said to me, it was total carnage, the bikes tumbling back down. But then there's still the odd rider that sort of does it in one, the crowd give him a big clap, and uh, yeah, it's, it's cool, it's really cool to watch. Obviously on your way you come across guys like Alistair Brown who's uh, he's pretty keen to chat about Jane Berry DVDs. I guess it's just the way I gear my show up, uh, it kind of attracts these people but enduro for me, hard enduro isn't just about the riding, it's about what goes on in the pits, the banter, the banter on the side of the track. That's what makes it for me, I think it, it brings people together. Right, I'm going to go and hunt for some more now. It's uh, just starting to look like a bit like a uh, yeah, high down there at the moment, isn't it? <laughs> You can't have language like that on my videos. I wasn't swearing. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, leaving the carnage of the hill climb behind. I'm wondering where Nigel would be at this point. I knew he'd have left the start area, made his way up and across the forest, where he'd have come across the uh, the big rock climb. And I remember speaking to him before and he said, yeah, I'm going to take that pro line, but I guess it'd be deciding time. Was he going to go for the pro line or was he going to play it safe and take the alternative route? Speaking to him after the race, I think he said he went for the pro line, hit it hard, had a bit of a slip up. I think he might have gone down, so picked his bike back up and decided, yeah, let's take the alternative route, play it safe. The only problem with taking the alternative route is there's going to be a lot more traffic because the other riders are going to go that way, so you're going to find yourself battling a hell of a lot of traffic, where if you can take that pro line, you're pretty much guaranteed a straight through run. <laughs> Yeah, at this point I'm making my way back up through the forest. I'm going to check out the pit area, see if there's any, you know, there's always a few characters in there, see if anyone's refueling, see if I can catch any banter. And I come across Paul Rain, the head of the Blazing Squad. Uh, they get the team name, the Blazing Squad, from when they turn up at a race. Uh, they're smoking that many cigarettes in the sort of pit area that when they open the door, it's like a scene off Dr. Dre, the next episode. So <laughs> they're pretty fun characters. And Rainey normally wears a vest, he normally sports a vest. He's keen to work out, so he's always keen to show off the muscles. So I demanded that he revealed himself, and the timing just couldn't have been better. There was a group of ladies walking up behind us, and uh, it was just, yeah, it was pure quality. The man of this calibre reveals himself like this. The ladies just come flocking in. Come on, girls, one at a time. <laughs> <laughs> the unit says the reason that you're not riding today is that the pump tent's taken a few injuries and you're having to sort of stitch it back up. Yeah, I've spent quite a lot of time repairing it. It's, um, it's, this last few months we've been going full RPM in there, it's, uh, it's taken its toll. <laughs> 
when you know there's about 15 minutes left, you, you make your way to the finish area. There's normally not that much action at the finish. Literally, the riders are just, you know, crossing the line, but you're always hopeful of someone just gunning it, getting a bit loose and flipping the bike out, looping it out on the finish line. Uh, luckily, we, we were there just at the right moment when Brad Williams crossed the finish line. Now, I don't think I've seen a more proud dad. Uh, Tim was keen to treat him with all sorts of goodies after the race. How are you, Tim? Oh, you boy, lovely boy. I'm good. Are you out here for the gangbang? I am, yeah. yeah. Absolutely fantastic. We'll be gangbanging all night now. Brad's leading the race. Really? He's on his final lap. He's got an awesome lead. So if he wins, it'll be partying all night. It'll be partying all week. When you're performing in the bedroom with your good lady, do you use the GoPro? I do, yeah. yeah. I sometimes put it on my head, and then sometimes... I won't tell you where else I put it, but... Uh... <laughs> tell, tell, tell us how you feel, Brad. I feel amazing. Uh, good track. Brutal. Fun. Right. Tim says that, you know, when you perform like this, you're going to get a sort of party all week. It's going to last all week. He says he's just going to give you the house and let you smash it Oh, up. yeah, strippers and cocaine a lot. <laughs> Is it tough? Yeah, awesome event. Do you think Tim's going to give you the rub down now with a damp dishcloth? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> You've come in as youth, as he's a youth boy, and it's the first time we've ever raced lads his own age and his own category. So, uh, yeah, we're absolutely ecstatic, as to say the least. Have you been rolling around in the mud? I did, yeah, because I wanted to look like I'd been doing and pushing and helping people. So, yeah, I did rub my hand in the mud and swirl it round on my leg and and then on my arm. You know, you've got to look the part. No problems, really. I'm relaxing now. <laughs> is, it, is this how you sort of recover yourself? Yeah. Banana, banana and, food. and a bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the rest are in the van. <laughs> um, goose, mate, flipping both shoulders. I, I, can, I couldn't even get my socks off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's more like, it's not the riding bit, it's when you like pile up and you're struggling and picking your bike up and that, that's the hardest bit and then you just, you blow up then and you can't ride. Right. Well, that, that main rock garden that I thought might have been doable, first lap arm pump I thought I'd go for it because everyone was going the other way, just did a 180. <laughs> really? So that put me in the right direction for the line I should have took. <laughs> right. So you think it was just getting spun round by a fate sort of thing? And then yeah, it, yeah, definitely, yeah. Can you tell us, like, compared to your mountain bike, what, what difference is now? Like, when you finish the mountain bike sort of day of riding, how do you feel compared to that? Um, well, downhill's so different because it's, uh, it's intense for three minutes. Like, you're going much more on the edge for your race, you know? Like, you're going absolutely flat out, whereas in this, you're not. Which, I learned that you need to be more steady and not, and save your, conserve your energy, which didn't happen on the first lap. Um, so it's, that's what's so different. This is more like, I reckon it's more like a cross-country mountain bike race. So Never been any good at that. <laughs> right, okay. All the downhill bits I was real good on. <laughs> because I thought, shit, if anyone's watching and I do this shit, they're all going to piss it. So <laughs> I had to commit massive yeah. to them bits. Do you think on a, a sort of a rounder then, do you think you'll come and do another one? Definitely, yeah. yeah. Got the bug, yeah, I love it. Right. Just need to sort my shoulders out and get a good start. And I reckon I'll be all right. So yeah, you know you've not got long. Once race one's ending, you need to get yourself down to the start line for race two. The crowds start coming in, it's pretty hectic, so you need, you need to get a good spot so you can film the guys off the start line. Now, a guy called Richard Flack, AKA Daddy Flack, offered me a lift on the quad. Normally, you'd be willing to take a lift off anybody that wants to help get you to where you're going quicker, but Richard, he's, uh, he's had a few sort of health and safety issues, sawn a few fingers off uh, due to his day job. And I think rumour is he, he crashed a quad, I can't remember where the venue was, with a fellow spectator on the back, a lady, and tumbled down the hill. I think she broke her arm, Richard Flack broke some ribs, so I was a bit wary about getting on the quad, but I thought, you know, what the hell, I'll risk it. So on the way down, I bumped into Luke Flack, who's Richard's son. He's a, he's a funny character. And I, I can't remember the year, but a couple of years ago, he, he crashed his bike on the course. And David Knight just absolutely ran him over like a steamroller. So I think at the time he was a bit bitter about it, but you know, it's water under the bridge these days. <laughs> so yeah, just before race two's about to get underway, I saw Paul Ed coming through the forest. 
got a bit of, bit of chat off him about race one. I think some of the sportsmen and the vets said it was a, a little bit too hard. So obviously you made it as tricky as you could, but do you think you went a bit over the top or do you think it was, do you, th did you think it was going to be all right when you put it together? Yeah, no, I'd just say it just maybe a few little areas that, you know, made mistakes, made it a little bit tight, but hey, it's, it's fed before, he's trying to make it as extreme, an extreme race and no, fair play to them all, they all finished in that, but I think, as I say, just a little bit hard, maybe. Right, OK. <laughs> Which is your sort of favourite part of the course, if you had to pick one bit that you'd like to ride? You know, that... um, I think, like, really the, the waterfall section for the pros and that. Um, but for the morning race, all the banks, I think the banks were, were mega. Right. You know, they were tough, like, for sure. But, uh, no, for me, I'm just glad I'm uh, running it and marshalling. So after the chat with Paul Ed, it's time to get over to the start area. Now, this is race two, so you've got the pro guys in here, the expert guys... A lot of them don't want to mess around, they just want to get the best start they can, get round that first right hand corner and out of there. What are you going to do to get the whole shot here with bolts next to you? Crook and ride under that bush. <laughs> Crook the car. Are you feeling good today, Bolts? Yeah, feeling good. I think it's going to be hard work because it's um, it's drying out a little bit, and a little bit, but it's going to get on the seat and you're going to do a million flipping pull ups, aren't we, on handlebars? So, yeah, it's going to be tricky, but we'll, we'll give it the best shot. Good, see good. if we can see if we can have a go with this guy and uh, see where see where we end up. Came across Rich Ely, who was up for a bit of banter, and I think Tom Sagar got involved as well. Said he was a bit of a team player. Plenty of sex last night. Yeah, plenty. Right. D my dad wasn't interested though. Was he not? No. Nah. You struggling these days <laughs> to get him involved? Yeah. He didn't <laughs> want to get involved with me and Jody. That's a shame. He yeah. should be a team player, shouldn't he? He should be really. Are you a, are you a team player, Tom? Yeah, always. Uh, always, yeah. 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 But I have to be head of the team. Do you? Do you like yeah. to lead the way? Lead the way. Right. Be the boss. Do you mind how many players there are in the no, game? No, no, no. As long as they, you know, take their turn and don't like rush into right, things, right, it's, it's alright. So with race two underway, I'm just going to leave you with some no interruption highlights. Yeah. So, it's uh, the boy, Marvin Devine. DC Neverland, yeah, Virginia. Out, what up? <laughs> I got About you. that time. So, uh... Woo! Don't give my mic. We gonna keep it old school with this one. Okay. Just a beat in the mic. Okay. <laughs> That's all I need, baby. Um, whenever you're ready, Devontae. Mr. We gonna touch this ready, million, Mr. bro. Devine. Top C. Show the world that you don't play that. Everybody, I gotcha. They say, how does it feel to be worth a meal without having a deal? My money hits ADHD, it never stays still, so it raises. His album main label is most hated, claiming I'm so basic. But may I hear that bass in your ride? Cause you're playing my back and sticking you flat. The one your girl wanna join my team, you be like, nah, baby, he ain't worth the dime. Spend that money on some Mickey D's. I'm just trying to feast on caviar from overseas. So back in the day, was there quite a lot of riders jumping this? I believe so, yes. Uh, but nowadays, they're just. Girl. She ain't break my heart, I just got tired of broke girls The ones from high school were in my past tense Now they searching for me, got a moment like an Aztec Wish I ain't focused on them in my classes Maybe I could have gone to my graduation practice And the flow will get hotter in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 But yeah, I made it out, flexing my diploma Success is all over me, you can tell from the aroma I see why my mama named me Marvin Cause I'm starving for this success And when I get it, what's next? I'll never leave my city hanging like a chain on my neck So I'ma put it on the cap so we always ahead Everybody trying to get fed but ain't working for bread So beef eats in the streets so they're eating with feds And that's dead, huh? That's what we say in the DMV I'm trying to get those initials pictured on MTV Cause everybody need to know the city that I'm in Proud of your class song, something radio's gotta spin I'ma be all you see, haters take a swim Put my heart in this song, Hey y'all who need an extra limb? They see me walking with a limp, thinking that I'm pimping that's the effect your pockets give when you got money, yeah. Wow, excuse my language, but damn, um, yeah, he just went ham. Uh, yeah, I gotcha. Just listen to me. See that printed paper? Picture it green. It's getting rich or die trying like 50. Got all the kids with me like my name Walt Disney. And I dress so spiffy. I'm a London boy. But I turn your studio into a dungeon boy. Cause I'm a dragon with the rap and attack him to walls crack. And turn your favorite rapper into a chick and he starts clapping. Ha-ha, <laughs> bring any rapper, I kill him myself. And now I'm not a black space, but I'm feeling myself. I'm on my biggie-ish, black and I'm black. With a chick named Heaven with one hell of a rap. Rap against me, please. Dude, you ain't nothing nice. Studios like, please don't crush the mic, cause that's real.
food So I just set the mic ablaze With a swag like Ray Bans And a block of ice And that's cool Why you hating from the side? You better join in with the guys At the back of the line And yell boo Me, I'm just spitting with ease The chains of college dropout Zero degrees Stop a rerun, never I'm going forward fast You think I just dropped the glass All you hear is a smash Young rookie on the track But I play like a pro But you ain't know Well, you late like the Letterman show I've been flashy You know that, son I'm the reason every moment is a Kodak one Got these women in their classiest posture I'm flyer than Big Bird And now all I need is an Oscar So that's it for episode two of Mikey's World. I had an awesome time down at Tong and once again, David Knight dominated. He really has got them short, hard enduro circuits absolutely dialed and he was full gas all day. So coming up on the Adventure Spec YouTube channel, we've got something a little bit different to my normal shows. We're gonna go a bit more in depth and follow Nige Page in the run up to Steve Island's tough one this year from Nantmar Quarry. We're gonna go over to Nige's house, get some preparation stuff take him out on a day's riding with another hard enduro rider and then we're going to follow him at the main event where we're going to see how he gets on. So that's going to be really interesting. Stay tuned for that one. That's it for me. I need to go and chop some wood for the fire. to you in association with the new Climax Sea Range.